Hey guys, what's up? This is Chaos Bender here again for yet another update video, and this is going to be like the one I uploaded two years ago. And after all that time and not touching this channel except for the Paper Mario the Origami King videos, um, yeah, I think it's time to have a nice little update to talk about what's been happening these past couple of years and you know what we have been up to, as I also like to talk to you guys in the comments below. So just like the previous update video, it's going to have the same format. I'm going to quickly talk about the most important things that I, you know, that I think have happened to me in these past couple of years, and then after that, I'm going to ramble for a little bit as we have this nice and possibly only video on this channel, um, you know, in the next couple of years. Until, of course, I am still keeping my promise. If Mario Kart 9 ever comes out, I am going to let's play that on my, ch well, on this channel, and uh, yeah, I think it should be very fun. So. What has been happening in these past couple of years? Number one, if you guys remember the previous update video that I gave you, um, I mentioned that I was going to start a new project on YouTube, but I didn't say what specifically because I didn't want to, you know, have like any initial traction of this dev YouTube channel. Uh, but I started a, an old school RuneScape channel and right now the numbers are absolutely popping. I cannot be any happier with, with that channel. The turnout from the community is amazing. Uh, and right now it's currently my biggest source of income. You know, it's actually YouTube, which uh, we came full circle. Not only am I you know, making the most money on YouTube, but also I am making videos on RuneScape, which uh, for those of you who are 100% OG uh, viewers of the channel, you would remember that I started making RuneScape videos and then I changed it to Let's Plays. So that's what I'm going to talk about so following up. Number two, um, I got married, as you can see. If you follow me on social media, if you watch the Trashy Trio, um, you would know that uh, Max and Josh, uh, Bobbery18 and Bo Blacks, they came to Mexico for the wedding, which was super cool. Um, other than that, I'm also, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in my new house. I think in some previous videos, if you guys remember the other background, that was my room in my parents' house. But now we have a new house, which I'm going to show you guys around and should be very nice. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about, you know, the elephant in the room, COVID. Um, and uh, I mean, I'm not going to talk too much about it, just kind of say how it was super inconvenient and what uh, I, I did because of it. So uh, other than that, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I've been doing in terms of traditional or like normal jobs, I would say, which is also a nice experience. And then at the end, I'm going to talk about the most, one of the most exciting things I have done in these past couple of years, and that is deplatforming a pedophile, child groomer, women uh, women harasser on YouTube or uh, also on Twitch. We I was part of an operation that deplatformed a child child groomer on Twitch, and now his life is in absolute shambles. It's kind of funny, but uh, don't don't criticize me for it, because I think what I'm going to tell you about this person, uh, you know, I think you're also going to be happy that, you know, he is like um, in, in the fucking misery. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Ali, I know you'll be watching this video because you love typing your name on YouTube to see um, what people say about you. Just stay here and uh, enjoy the video. Right, so... Um, that's pretty much it for the main part, and uh, yeah, everything has been going great. For those of you who just want to check in, uh, see what's up, uh, if you want to keep up uh, with uh, my uploads, my things here on YouTube, go ahead and check out the first link in the description below, which is my mm, now my main YouTube channel, in which I make old school RuneScape videos, and then you can also follow me on Twitter too, and also on Trashy Trio to see what's up. Um, other than that, that's it for the summary of this video. I hope you guys are having an amazing... Uh, you know, couple of years, you know, here in the past. And also, I wish you the best of 2022 for you. Hopefully, this COVID thing uh, comes to an end. Maybe not soon, but uh, hopefully it starts, you know, like not being so inconvenient anymore. Uh, yeah, like I said before, I'll see you guys if and when Mario Kart 9 drops. And other than that, you can check out my other YouTube channel, Trashy Trio to Give Up. And that's pretty much it. So thank you guys. And it is time for the rambly part of the video. In here, I'm going to talk not in 100% detail because I don't want this video to be like three hours long, maybe like a nice hour, hour 30 minutes would be just fine. Um, so what about all of the topics I mentioned before? First, I'm going to talk about the RuneScape channel, right? So in 2020, I started making RuneScape videos because I started playing that game again in 2018. And at some point when, you know, after... Uh, not after maxing, but like um, at some point I was like, you know, I really want to make videos about this again because the reason why I got back into old school RuneScape was because I 
started watching videos and I was like, you know, I think it would be nice to co to go back to the game. So somewhere in 2018, I got back into it and I was like, you know, I really want to make videos and make guides and help people who are like me, returning players, uh, better understand the game and see what, uh, you know, what has changed and, you know, how you can get the best items, the best levels, the best gear and the fastest way possible. So in 2020, I started making videos and I think... I didn't upload consistently until September of 2020, if I'm not mistaken, right? So I started uploading guides. So for example, for those of you who don't know, the, the game Old School RuneScape is about uh, getting levels, money, drops from monsters, whatever. And those levels, the maximum level is 99. And for me, I was like, okay, I want to show people how easy it can be because... I watched guides in order to know how to get from 1 to 99, but the people I watched, they made videos that were like 15, 18, 20, 25 minutes. And I, I was like, this is nice for a brand new player, but for people like me who are just getting back into this game, I think it would be nice to have another type of niche videos. So instead of like 20 minute videos, I made like three, four minute videos in order, you know, for people to know the best way to get the maximum level in those skills is what, what they call it, right? Um, so it took me around one year, I think like 350 days or something to get my first 1000 subscribers on that channel. And then it took, I would say, um, in 2021, uh, yeah, 2021, I, I, I had, uh, between January and May, I, it was like between 1K and in May, it was 2.5K subscribers. But then I upload one video. Um, I took the format from Josh's Twitter versus series and I applied it to a drama that started on the RuneScape uh, community. And I did it. And then my channel started exploding, right? So I was like, okay, I need to make more videos to see if this is going to work. And uh, yeah, I started making three videos per week. And I think that lasted for like two or three months. I just had so many things to talk about in the game that it was like a nice, consistent influx of videos. And I think in, you know, it came to a point where I was gaining 1000 subscribers every week. And from May of 2021, May of this year, uh, where I had 2.5 thousand subscribers. Right now, at this current moment, uh, December 30th, 2021, I have 17,200 subscribers and the views and the, the the revenue that I'm getting from it is even more than you know what I get from my normal jobs that I was doing before. So that's what I'm gonna talk about briefly about uh, today. So basically, I upload those videos in May and at this point, my channel is not monetized. And I was like, okay, I think this would be a great time to do it. So I upload that video that kind of catapulted my channel into like, not stardom, but like it, it, it gave it a nice starting push, right? Um, so that was in May, May 17th. And then I started making money from that channel on May 25th, I believe, right? Uh, so thanks to that, the first full month in which I started making money from YouTube was June. And I made, I think, like $800 from that. Now, for people in the US, Europe, Canada, anywhere that's developed, not really here in Mexico, that amount of money is not going to sound great, right? But here in Mexico, the average salary, I would say, um, I would say like average income is like anywhere between 7,000 Mexican pesos and then also... Uh, you know, higher up would be, I would say, eight or nine thousand. That translates to around, I would say, uh, three hundred and fifty dollars to around four hundred, four hundred fifty dollars per month. And that's because our cost of living is like not incredibly high, right? Um, so a good salary would be anywhere above like seven hundred fifty dollars or eight hundred dollars. And I was already making that, and I was like, wow, this is amazing. So I was like, okay. It would be amazing if I can like do this for a living 100%, but I cannot, um, you know, I can, I just can't base my decision of quitting a job uh, in order for me to, you know, like completely depend on YouTube. So I was like, okay, at this point, I am working full time um, at a business college, which I'm going to talk about in just a few minutes. Uh, so I had a full time job. I had a nine to five job, which I was like, okay. 
let me see if this keeps going this way. And if I see the same amount of money in three or four months, I am going to quit it and I'm going to dedicate myself to YouTube 100%. Um, eventually that happens and my last uh, work day was October 27th, which was just a couple of days before my wedding, which is what I'm going to talk about now. Um, so it has been going amazing and so far uh, I am going to put like somewhere on screen a like a, like a screenshot of today's analytics and right now in the past 28 days I have made $1300 and again for people in the US and de uh, developed countries that's not going to sound amazing but here in Mexico it's like three times the average salary of like a, of like a normal traditional job that you would need to finish like high school college so it's like it's it's literally life-changing money here in Mexico and I was like I'm gonna do that I, I am going to do that it's my dream and it's something that I have always liked you know it's RuneScape making videos speak English and like it's it's basically all of the things I love combined into one so I was like okay quitting my job and that's it right um so because of that, I also have a project coming up on January 19th in which um, it's going to be a game event, which is going to last for seven weeks. And I am going to do daily streams of, um, you know, of the, of the entire event. And I'm going to upload maybe two or three videos per week uh, showing my progress in the video uh, uh, or in, in the game, because that's what initially got me back into RuneScape is just watching progression videos. Like, okay, I get from nothing to like, a great player and a good account, right? So that's what I'm gonna do. And then after that series, I have two series that I want to, you can't see the two, right? <laughs> I have two series that I am going to dedicate a long time to, which is, uh, you know, you guys probably don't know about old school RuneScape, but if you do, it's going to be a hardcore Ironman quest cape. And then also my main account, which I have maximum levels and everything, uh, it's going to be the maxed account progression, which is like a completion. So it's basically going to be those two series. And I think I am going to do like a full year of those two series and then see where it goes. Obviously this YouTube RuneScape thing is not going to last, like I would say five or even 10 years and eventually it's going to have to stop. So I'm saving every single, every single dollar. So, so for example, the uh, gaming PC that you guys are going to see in a little bit on the house tour video, that was a hundred percent funded with my YouTube money. And it was like, uh, I would say like 2000, $2,500 or something, which again, here in Mexico, that sounds like super expensive. Um, but yeah, it was completely funded from YouTube and I'm, I'm you know, I don't want to sound like, like I'm showing off, right? But I'm making so much money on YouTube that the gaming PC, it's like, ah, yeah, sure, I can, I, I can afford it, right? Um, so yeah, it's like such a nice feeling to be doing this as my main source of income. That's just like amazing. Um, and yeah, so that's basically the uh, nice little update in terms of uh, the RuneScape channel that I have. And hopefully you guys can check it out and, uh, you know, maybe subscribe if you want to watch it. And if you don't, uh, if you haven't heard of RuneScape, which would be really weird, uh, um, you can go ahead and try it and join my Discord, which we have dedicated for, you know, my RuneScape channel, and that would be very nice. Right, um, so that's it for the RuneScape channel. It is now time to talk about my wedding. Now, I'm not going to talk in detail about it because on the second channel, on the Chaos Bender with double Z, I am going to upload a TTT wedding video in which I'm going to upload a couple of clips that I recorded with uh, Bobbery18 and the Blacks, as well as my wife and the Bobbery's boyfriend. Uh, when we, when, uh, when all of us were here in Mexico, uh, you know, we went to certain places, you know, we, <clears throat> we had some fun, we had the wedding, uh, we recorded like, you know, a lot of videos for, for gaming for the Trashy Trio. Um, so you guys can go ahead and watch my second channel. Uh, link in the description uh, for you to watch that nice little adventure and then you can also watch the trashy trio which I'm going to link in the description below too so you guys can listen to the whole experience with uh, Max and Josh coming to Mexico and then also my experience with it but here I am just going to give you a brief summary so I think I should have brought some water um, I think my, my throat is starting to get kind of cringe but anyway uh what happened is that I got married in the on, on, on the 29th of October, right? And for that, I invited Bob Ray, Tina, and Bo Blacks, and I was like, uh, would you guys like to come to my wedding? Sure. And then one day later, they had their flights booked and everything, which was super cool. And then they came here, right? Uh, so they came um, 
I think it was like one day before the wedding, so we had like a nice little bachelor's party, which uh, we didn't do anything crazy. It was just like drinking a little bit, uh, having fun with uh, uh, me, Max, Josh, Tim, and then my sister's boyfriend, Dan, and yeah. So uh, the following day, it was wedding day, and well, I rented a suit because I was like, I'm not going to spend like $500, $600 on a nice suit if I'm only going to wear it once, fuck that. I'm just going to rent it, and it was like... So nice because like uh, I, I think I haven't talked about my my wife at all, right? So uh, let me talk about the wedding and then I'm gonna talk about my wife a little bit. Um, so basically we had uh, the wedding and then the religious wedding was at like 5 p.m. I didn't want any religious weddings because I'm not religious, but you know it was it was you know for my wife. I was like, okay, if you want to have it, I guess we can. Um, after that we had the party that was on a Friday and then Saturday Sunday was spent uh, traveling around my city uh, just going to certain places to show people or, uh, to show Max Josh and Tim around and uh, Craig didn't come which was kind of sad uh, money and the covid situation was a uh, kind of tight, so, uh, yeah, uh, but he had the intention to come, so that was nice of him, um, so basically, what happens is that, uh, Saturday and Sunday, we spent touring around and then showing them random places, and then Sunday, Tim, which is, uh, who is, uh, Max's boyfriend, had to leave, uh, I think at, like, um, 11 a.m., and we basically spent all, basically all Sunday, all Monday, and then all Tuesday recording, uh, videos we actually streamed on Josh's uh, Twitch channel, uh, and then we are going to upload all of the VODs to the Trashy Trio, basically us playing uh, Mario Party, Mario Kart, Super Smash Brothers, and like a bunch of games that we want to show you guys, uh, which would also be really cool. Um, so yeah, that was it about the wedding, and like I said, I'm not going to go too much into detail about it because I'm going to li uh, to leave you guys a ton of links in the description for you watch uh, for you to watch even more content uh, about my wife. So basically, I met this lovely woman uh, about uh, what is it? Well. Over five years ago, we, we started out um, uh, because I was working with my father. I started working at a German school and I was like, oh, nice. So I met her, but she had a boyfriend at the time. And for me, if someone is in a relationship, that's like off limits. Like I, I, I couldn't even see her like, oh, I think she's cute. She's nice. Uh, I, I would like to talk to her or go out with her. No, like if someone is a, in, in a relationship, like zero percent, right? Um, so after that, I realized or someone tells me that she is... Um, single and I'm like oh okay so then the more I talk to her the more I notice that she is like super cute super nice and kind and, and funny and and, and and all of this so we started going out and then I think we went uh, we, we we dated for like two months and then uh, we made it official I asked uh, I asked her to be my girlfriend which is kind of nice um, after four years of relationship I proposed to her <clears throat> my fucking throat. I proposed to her and uh, yeah, that was basically the story. It took exactly one year for us to get married. Um, we were going to get married legally before the religious wedding, but uh, there was a problem with that. So and on the 29th of October, that was our religious and also our legal wedding. And that's pretty much it. Um, uh, you can also see my wife in my RuneScape channel, which, uh, you know, I, I, I love those videos. Those are super cute. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much about my marriage and, uh, you know, Max and Josh coming here, which, like I said, I'm not going to, you know, dwell too deep into that because we have a ton of content for it. Um, other than that, if you guys remember the intro, <clears throat> what comes after my wedding and marriage, well, it's living together. So um, right now I am going to show you, we actually recorded this before, I am going to show you guys a nice little house tour in which uh, my wife recorded around me giving you, uh, you know, a little explanation of uh, all of the rooms in our house. So that is going to come up, <clears throat> to come right up. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy. All right, guys, hello to the house tour. We are going to begin, as you can see, the outside is looking fairly decent, but the best part is obviously inside. We have this nice little doorbell installed and we are going to begin with the garden. As you can see, some of the information is going to be covered, such as my wife and uh, my car uh, license plate, whatever you call it. And as you can see, this is going to be the, uh, I guess I would say the main garden, which I mean, it's kind of small, but it's kind of cute. Uh, here, there's really nothing to show other than space for the cars and the entrance, which we are going to not use. However, we are going to go around the house. So let's go around. And as you can hear, my ability to make these types of IRL videos has 
been decreasing over the years, but I'm going to try my best to show you guys around. So this is the main, I would say, uh, hall. well, it's not really a hall, it's maybe like a corridor in which uh, there are still some things uh, left over from the people who built the house, this is fairly new. And as you can see, yeah, some details are uh, around the house. And right outside we have the main garden. So as you can see, this is going to be a little area for us to, you know, put like uh, maybe a few chairs or whatever. And what's left over is the well. So as you can see, because of this, this was the very first thing. I will try to find a picture, but maybe I'm not going to find it. So anyway, this was the very first thing that was built, well, built in the house. Uh, and the well is about, I would say, 40 meters deep. And because of that, we are going to have free water for the rest of our lives as long as we live in this house. So we are going to come right in. And we are going to start with the dining room, I would say this is. Uh, all of the furniture you see throughout the video was uh, built by the same uh, provider, I guess, and it's actually kind of nice. I was a little on the defense on uh, having furniture this way, but it was really, really nice. Go ahead and lock it, otherwise uh, some bitches are going to come in here and steal and rape us, and you don't want that. Next we have the kitchen. As you can see, pretty spacious. I'm not going to go into every single one of these. We have a nice uh, refrigerator, water, uh, places to, I guess, wash the dishes and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if you guys want to hear my worst customer experience uh, I have ever had, uh, go ahead and watch the Trashy Trio podcast number 15. In there, I talk about the nightmare that was about, uh, uh, that was dealing with the person who built this kitchen and um, I would say it was not pleasant, but the final product is fairly decent. What, what do you guys think? Other than that, we have a nice little bathroom here. So just in case we have people over, this is just like a nice half bathroom that we are just going to use whenever you are downstairs, which is very nice, right? Uh, up here, we have an interest, well, we have two interesting parts to the ground floor, and it is this. So I don't know what to do with it right now. Uh, we are using it for storage, but maybe in the future when we have a nice little puppy, uh, we can build like a you know, little house for the puppy right here, the bed, uh, I don't know, food, water, whatever. And then we come to the most puzzling part of the house. What is this? So originally this was supposed to be a door. However, when we were looking at the floor plans, we were like, why do we need two doors? So we eventually seal this and now it's literally just here. We do not know what to do with this. If you guys have any suggestions, make sure to leave them in the comments below. Up next, we have a very nice part of the house, which is the living room. And as you can see, Nintendo is making its, um, you know, its presence felt right here. So we have a nice little dry bones, chain chomp, Mario and Donkey Kong plushies, which uh, makes the house kind of, you know, video game, you know, has a nice video game feeling to it. Now, we come to the best, hands down, the best part of the ground floor, and that is going to be the office slash study room, if you want to call it that. So, let's begin. So, as you can see, it's a little messy because things are not 100%. However, what's 100% done is the gaming setup, right? It's, it's going to be both the gaming, video making, and streaming. Uh, like I said before, uh, I am... Uh, how do I say this? Like, uh, I have another channel in which I make RuneScape videos, and this is basically what I have been able to build thanks to monetization on, uh, you know, on that channel. So I am going to take the camera from my wife for a little bit, and as you can see, boom. So check it out. Uh, the specs on this are, I, I'll, I'll put them on the screen somewhere around here, but pretty powerful for what I need. You have nice little monitor, double monitor, and a nice um, microphone there you have. Uh, internet and some other random stuff, right? And, and then here is where my wife is going to work. It's going to be very nice. And then we have some random things in the, not the back of the uh, of the room, but yeah, whatever. So this is pretty hype, I would say. Now we are going to go to the second floor and we are going to make ourselves, or not, not on our way, but let's go ahead and go upstairs. If you guys remember, or if you watched the Trashy Trio video in which I did a house tour, that was not ready 100%, but now we are living in it, and I would say it's pretty nice. 
we are going to start with the least exciting part of the house, which is this room. Eventually, this is going to be for visitors. Uh, I don't want any kids. My wife wants one kid. That's yet to be decided. Uh, so eventually, we may be using this room for another, well, I would say another person, right? Um, in here, nothing too interesting. It's just uh, literally another bathroom with, uh, you know, the toilets, shower, and whatever. Sometimes we use this one because it's, uh, I think the water pressure is better here, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and close it. And we are going to go to the main bedroom, which is very nice. All right, check it out. Excuse the bed, it's not really made, but uh, this is really comfortable, really nice, I would say. And despite this area being super cold, the flannel, I would say, bed sheets that we got are super comfortable and at night, personally, I don't have, uh, I am not really cold. Uh, I think my wife isn't really cold either, you know, maybe a little bit, but uh, yeah, let's continue. Up here we have the closet. Now, again, in the Trashy Trio video, this was empty, but now all of our clothes are right here. And as you can see, well, I have, if you want to come in here, uh, this is the area for shirts, pants, and then down here we have some jackets, shirts, shorts, pajamas, more shirts and whatever, and for my wife, you know, there's her cute little clothes, jackets, dresses, everything that she needs. And last but not least, we have the main bathroom, bathroom, sorry, in which is literally just the same, shower, toilet, and then a sink. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we go to the main part of the second floor. When making the house, I told my wife, you can do whatever you want with it, but the office or the study room, whatever you call it, the office and the TV room are mine 100%. You have no say in it because I am going to be the one in charge of decorating it, right? So you guys can let me know what you think. So you come in here and the main thing is this nice, I, I think it's 65 inch um, flat screen TV. Very nice. And what is it going to be for? Of course, it is all the video games. So right now, uh, this is for um, both, of, uh, both of our switches. And then this, we have Wii U handheld consoles, which right here we have the original DS. I don't think it works anymore, so it's just like a memorabilia, I would say. Xbox 360, Wii, GameCube, and finally Nintendo 64, which uh, that one doesn't work. I'm, I'm gonna have to get another one if we want to play original N64 games. And most importantly, we have Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. This is the very first video game I ever played. And without this, there's a small chance that you guys would not be watching this channel, this video, or you would not know me at all, right? So you get in front of this right here and uh, yeah. There's the Mario, the Teemo hats, and of course, we have the video game collection. It's not everything because I left some um, video game boxes at home because I don't have those games anymore. At one point, I sold them. I don't really know why, but those are all the games we currently own. And when all of these consoles are hooked up, we are going to, you know, play in their original form. Most importantly, if you check out the wall, well, what do you guys think? These are posters. I bought at PAX East 2016 and I saved them. They were in my closet at my parents' house. And I was like, okay, I am going to unfold them and I'm going to you know, put uh, frames around them when I move to a new house. And finally, now that it's done, we have Twilight Princess, Mario Kart 8, Star Fox Zero, which interestingly enough, I haven't played. You guys remember I did Road to Star Fox Zero and that never really happened, so, oh well. But the poster is still pretty cool, my wife likes it, and uh, yeah, it's pretty nice. And finally, we have my pre-order uh, uh, Super Smash Bros. Wii U uh, poster, which uh, that one is smaller, but uh, yeah, I would say the this entire room, I think I did a pretty good job. Yeah, so we have all those posters, and what's interesting about this, um, I would say the... Um, uh, the, the couches, the sofa, is that it's like a, like a modular sofa, so you can change it around in a 3x3, three three, and it can easily be changed into a bed or whatever, so when me and my wife want to have a nice sleepover, then we are going to, you know, move them around, and this is going to be like a second bed, so right now we are not really in a hurry to, you know, have a second 
bed. So yeah, this is where we have spent a lot of time watching movies, especially Cobra Kai. Uh, that's a really good show. My wife is smiling right now because she loves it too. And yeah, I love this one. And it is now time to go to, um, I would say, a more interesting place. So we go to the third floor. And as you can hear, there's a lot of echo. It's a ton of echo. Which I, don't think, uh, which I don't think it's going to get fixed anytime soon. Soon, sorry. So we come outside, and as you can see, the highlight of the third floor is going to be the view. So if you want to show around, uh, yeah. So that is the view, eventually. Well, right now we don't have a ton of money anymore, <laughs> right? We spent a lot of money on the house. Uh, but then eventually what we want to do is that this is this area is going to be for like uh i would say laundry like i would say house service type things and then on this side of the house this could eventually be like a maybe not like a social area but we plan to have like a like a roof garden or like a i don't know somewhere to also have like a nice um, you know party area whatever uh that we can also have in the garden but this would be a nice second option and, um, oh yeah, one more thing, let's go. Also not really exciting, but here we have the service room. Uh, the only thing we have is a washing machine and something to like uh, scrub, is, is, the, is the word scrub? Yeah, I guess, uh, to scrub some clothing. And as you can see, this, this room is also pretty naked, but eventually we are just going to have like a small, I don't know, like a furniture in order for us to get the, um, uh, the detergent, uh, softener, if, if that's how you call it. And yeah, that's basically going to be it. So yeah, we have this thing for the gas, which is pretty cool. Well, it's not really cool, but it's just there. Oh, fuck. And um, yeah, up there, I have to talk about this too. We have that thing for the for the water and then also we have the internet antenna which uh based on what you see around us i think it's uh i think it's a miracle that we have internet right here so uh yeah i am really thankful for that otherwise my uh, youtube channel my internet career wouldn't really work so uh yeah we're gonna have to wait uh, for us to get better service, like uh, Elon Musk's uh, Starlink or maybe Optic Fiber, whatever you call it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So back to the original video for us to continue talking about important things. And that is it for the house tour. Hopefully you guys liked it. And if you're watching until now, let me know what you thought of the entire house. What was your favorite room? Or you can tell me what you thought of the office, which uh, in which I am at right now, and the TV room, which is... Uh, those are the best parts of the house, hands down. So what comes after that? I think I would like to talk a little bit about COVID and uh, work, right? Uh, it's not going to be too long. I'm just going to, you know, ramble for just a little bit. Um, so basically COVID hit at the beginning of 2020, right? I think there was the, there were some cases at the end of 2019. That's why it's COVID-19. Um, but I was like, okay, how many times have we heard of things like super virus, super bug, you know, in, in, an, an infectious disease or something? And I was like, uh, yeah, this is this is really not going to be anything to worry about, right? Um, it starts in Wuhan or Wuhan. I don't know how to pronounce it. Wuhan. And then it travels some other places in China. And it's like, oh, shit. And then, oh, some cases in the US and then here and then. I think the worst one was in like Spain at some point, right? Spain was like one of the worst, uh, uh, um, one of the worst places to be at. And then it was New York, and I was like, "Fuck, dude!" Like before that, the first couple of cases hit Mexico, and I was like, "Dude, this is going to be so sad, right?" At this point, I was working with a company that uh, is like a global company, and I was teaching to about like twenty-five people, and I was like making so much fucking money. I was making more money than YouTube, and you know, even YouTube, that's like a, t a shit ton of money, right? Uh, I was making so much money, but that only happened in two months because I think the economy, well, not the economy, but like the country shut down in I would say the mid. February, I think. And because of that, in that company that I was with, she, uh, they were like, okay, because of COVID, we are going to suspend, uh, you know, the classes and then we are going to let you know when we can come back. And I was like, oh, fuck, dude. Right. Uh, but I was still working with two other companies that uh, they were kind enough to tell me, okay, 
we are going to give you one and a half m months worth of payments for you to like, you know, stay afloat, like if, <laughs> stay afloat. That sounds like I'm poor, but uh, whatever. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, I'm super thankful for that. Uh, but then people were like, okay, um, we are pretty sure that this is going to end in two months. So we are going to resume everything. Oh, how, how wrong we were. Holy fuck, dude. Uh, the, 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 um, predictions for that were so wrong. Uh, so because of that, a month and a half later, my bosses in both of, well, my bosses, you know, the, the, the HR department, they tell me, okay, this is going to last for way longer. So please have the classes online and then give us like a, like a checklist of everyone that's coming. Uh, so I was like, yeah, sure. So for, I would say, how long was this? Like uh, 19 months. For 19 months, most of my students stayed in the online class, which was super nice. And uh, yeah, that's basically what I did. It was 19 months of like me almost like not leaving the house. I think for the first six months, the only times in which I left the house was to pick up my my, my girlfriend at the time. Uh, and then, you know, just be at home watching a movie and then drop her back off. Uh, the only things that were open were like Walmarts, like drugstores, anything else. There were like no movie theaters, no malls or anything. And that's like, oh, fuck, what do we do? Um, so yeah, fast forward a couple of, or not a couple, but, but actually a lot of months. Uh, yeah, that happens. And um, the, the country starts reopening a little bit and then we are slightly more free to do so. But then it's like, oh, more cases and then everything shuts down again, right? So it's just so cringe that like, okay, reopen and then no one cares anymore. Oh, we have to close, reopen, close, reopen, close. And then we have so many dumb asses that are, that are like, oh, well, you don't know what's in the vaccine. Uh, I, I am not going to take it, which if you are unvaccinated and that's your, your thought process behind that, which I don't know what's in this vaccine. Fuck you, take your vaccine and suck it up. I am not going to be one of those like leftist idiots, like leftist brainwashed propaganda things like uh, Stephen Colbert or like Jimmy Fallon, whatever, like take your vax, take your vax. Uh, those people are even more retarded than the people not taking the vaccine, right? So uh, take your vax, let's get the shit over with, right? But I am I am dwelling deeper into another topic that I shouldn't. Uh, if you are watching this and if, you, and, and if that's your thought process and if you're offended by me saying get vaccinated, oh, I, I I don't know what's in it. And then if you feel offended by it, fuck you. I don't care. Just go ahead and leave, right? <laughs> oh my God, dude. Anyway, uh, part of this is a joke, but it's 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 also kind of true. All right. Um, I am vaccinated. I am pro mask, whatever. Uh, just get this over with like this nice piece of cloth around your face is really not going to hurt you. Wear it wherever you have to. And that's pretty much it. Um, but other than that, right? Um, what, what was I going to talk about? Because I dwelled deeper into COVID uh, thing. Okay, so the, the, the world starts reopening a little bit. And um, what happens is that I get in contact with someone who wants to start a project um, that has to do with both business and English teaching. And I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. Uh, the project is kind of on hold. And then the CEO of a... Uh, of a business college, uh, the one who who initially contacted me says, "Oh, uh, by the way, if this is in, uh, if this is on hold, would you like to come work with us uh, for a little bit? You know, just uh, get uh, help the students. You know, get better in, in, in the English language and everything." And I'm like, "Yeah, sure." So I started working in this business college at the beginning of May. I think the first of May was my very first. No, was it was it the tenth? No, it was the first of May in which I started working, and yeah. It was nice, but at some point it was getting like super cringe because not only was I teaching English, I was doing more um, like management things that I didn't really like. It was like paperwork, get the students in order, uh, you know, help us with like events and shit. So like out of everything that I was doing in that job, like in that nine to five job, it was like... Um, I don't like this, but it, it's work, it's money, right? But then the YouTube thing hits and I'm like, peace out, bitches, right? Um, so basically, what happens is that I start doing YouTube full time and then, you know, that's here, it's uh, here. Well, I'm, I'm right here. Um, so basically, uh, other than YouTube, I am still working with those two companies that I, you know, that I teach their employees. And so, you know, to be kind of transparent with this, so for example, from... Those two companies, their combined income, it, 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 it depends every month because of the number of days in which I teach. But let's say it's like, uh, 
9,000 to 5,000. It's like 14,000 Mexican pesos, which comes out to be about 700 uh, US dollars, which again, not going to sound like a lot, but here in Mexico, it's a lot of money. Um, and then from YouTube, I am making almost double of what I'm doing in what I'm earning with both of those sources of income combined. So right now, it's like I am making like a decent amount of cash that I am, you know, spending in my house and my wife and my family gaming and whatever. So like, I would say at this point, uh, you know, I'm super comfortable in life. It's like another type of comfortable that whenever you live with your parents, you are comfortable, but because the only thing you have to worry about is like studying, playing games, like doing good at school, whatever. But then whenever you get married and you start to go independent, which I am right now with my wife, uh, that comfortable position changes from like the safety of your house and then your parents to like the safety of knowing that you can earn money and then you can be like safe. Uh, maybe not safe, right? Not no job is hundred percent safe. Uh, but it's it's nice to know that uh, you know it's that you you can do it, right? It's uh, it's 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 a really nice feeling, I would say. Um, so yeah, that's it for COVID work, what I've been doing, um, you know, doing fairly decent. Uh, now, uh, Mr. Larson, I know you'll be watching this, which is uh, kind of cool. Now, what am I talking about? In the previous or in the intro video, I told you guys that I was part of a group, that I was part of an operation that deplatformed a child groomer, women harasser on Twitch. And this story goes so deep that... There's just so much on this asshole that it's like, uh, uh, you, you guys will listen about. It. Okay. So for those of you who do not know, if you guys are familiar with RuneScape or League of Legends, and then if you were also in the social aspect of it on YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, there is a good chance that you know of a person by the name Gross Gore. And this person is called Ali Larson as well. Uh, this is the person who I'm talking about because this person loves going on YouTube, searching his name and see what people have to say about him because this person is mentally ill when it comes to like ego, uh, like egotistical attention, seeking, whatever. And it, it, it's kind of 99.9% confirmed that this person on his free time goes on YouTube, searches what people are saying about him and then, you know, goes like either like types on videos or replies to tweets and whatever, um, you know, whenever it's convenient. So that's why I know there's a good chance that he's watching this video right now. So enjoy this little story, even though it's not going to be relevant for you because you know exactly what happened. So uh, I'm going to tell you guys the story. So I already told you this person, right? Or well, about this person. And let's just say that I was a fan of this person because he was making YouTube videos about RuneScape I would say between 2007, 2008, all the way until like 2012 or 13, right? Um, after that, he changed his main game uh, to League of Legends, and then he also switched platforms to YouTube, uh, to Twitch, right? So he w he went from RuneScape video maker, really popular RuneScape video maker, to uh, League of Legends Twitch streamer. So basically. What happens is that I keep watching him from 2007, 8, all the way to 2012, 13 for his League of Legends videos. And then in 2016, he was permanently banned on Twitch because for the League of Legends pro scene, there are people, you know, uh, you guys, if you guys are uh, familiar with the esports scene, there are pro players, commentators, casters, uh, you know, anything in that bubble of esports. Um, this person went to an event uh with his best friend and then they took two women there and because everything was free of charge mr larson thought you know he was entitled to sex uh, since he got cocked at the event you know a lot of people were making fun of him one person in specific is called crepo mitch forcepoles whatever uh, and then because of that ali in one of his uh twitch streams he was like oh crepo i know that you slept with a 15 year old so like it's basically a way to call him a pedophile and people started going ape shit like calling uh crepo a pedophile calling him 15 whatever so because of that drama he left social media for a very long time and then larson was permanently banned on twitch he then streamed uh on youtube and hitbox for like a year or whatever and then he uploads a youtube video crying like literally crying for twitch to unban him like <laughs> i have changed 
I am a better person. Uh, I feel left out. So like one thing you should know is that this person is a manipula uh, manipulating manipulator, whatever. He's a master manipulator and will do anything to get like what he wants, uh, even though it can, you know, it can cost his reputation or whatever. So, okay, this person... For some reason, he goes back to Twitch because there's rumors that Crepa was actually sexting uh, uh, an underage girl, like 15, 16, I don't know, which is not the same person. So people so people were like, oh, Grossgora was right about Crepo, so he should be unbanned. <clears throat> For some reason, he's unbanned, right? <clears throat> Fuck my throat. And uh, yeah, he continues streaming uh, on Twitch, which uh, is kind of cringe, I would say. Um so then I still watch him for a little bit. At this point, I have nothing wrong against him, right? I have nothing wrong. I just thought, okay, this is kind of weird that he's doing this. But he was not doing anything wrong that I could see in order for me to, like, hate him. Uh, 2017, 18, and a little bit of 2019... I start learning about things that this person has done, like grooming minors, sexually uh, sexually assaulting women, sexually harassing them, scamming his viewers, scamming his family, scamming his video editors. Uh, this person is like, if you see him today, that's just an act. This person, truly on the inside, is one of the worst cockroaches, one of the biggest rats that you can see either on YouTube, not on Twitch anymore, <laughs> bitch. Um, but... This is one of the biggest weasels that you can ever see online, and it's basically an e-beggar who is going to stay afloat because of the retards who still watch him, right? Um, so, you know, that was kind of like a, like a, what, what do I want to say about this? This was kind of like a, like a tangent, I would say. So, basically, what happens? Um... I keep watching him, but I keep, but I learn about things that he has done, and I'm like, mm, I don't think I can watch this dude anymore. Peace, right? At some point... If you guys remember, well, I mean, maybe you remember, uh, Josh Boblax, uh, instead of gaming, he starts making drama videos, right? He talks about Keemstar, Pokimane, and then we had that whole situation in which Pokimane took down his video in order to silence him about a certain topic, which, you know, as we all know, it's going to blow up, and then, uh, you know, things didn't go well for Miss Pokimane, um... So basically what happened was that this blows out of proportion. Josh is known as a person who compiles tweets and videos and makes YouTube videos about it. And then because of that, he starts exploding. He went to like 50, 100, 150, 200. And then right now, I think he's like shy of uh, 300,000 subscribers, which is amazing. Uh, and then at some point in like mid-2019, he says, yo... I think your personality is like super toxic and whatever, and it would be perfect for the drama, com the drama commentary channel or uh, community. And I was like, you know, that's a that's a good idea. I I would like to talk about that. So basically, what happens is that um, what do you call it? Uh, fucking oh yeah, he he tells me oh yeah, your your personality would be great uh, to to talk about this. So basically, what I go okay, if I want to make a drama video. It has to be about something that I know a lot about, right? I don't have a lot of time to get into these new controversies like, oh, James Charles is a pedophile, Shane Dawson is a is a sophile, uh, Logan Paul, Jake Paul, KSI, boxing, whatever. I, I don't have time, and most importantly, I'm not interested in like those people, those those topics. So I was like, eh, whatever. But I remember, oh, there's a person I know who has an incredibly shitty past. And I can make a good exposed video about him, right? It is, of course, Mr. Grosgore, Ali Larson. And I'm like, okay, I remember a lot of things this person has done, but I do not have a lot of evidence to back up my points, right? So I remember that at one point, Grosgore called his community the plan, right? And because the plan went to other people's streams and harassed them, like being racist, homophobic, um... Uh, Gross Gore was eventually like, oh, I am going to disassociate myself with the plan and I am going to rebuild the community. So the people who were like, maybe not haters, but like people who like hate loved him in a way, they hijacked the name of the plan. So I remember that and I was like, okay, if I get in contact with people from the plan, maybe they have a couple of, um, you know, a couple of things that, you know, they would like to share in order for me to make an exposed video. Uh, I get into the plan and I start compiling clips thanks to many people in there, which I'm not going to mention because there's too many of them. I know specifically two, but, you know, let's just keep their anonymity uh, right here. Uh, so basically what happens? 
I get enough clips to make my exposed video. What I was aiming for was um, Twitch, uh, not a Twitch, uh, iDubs type of content cop video, which those are great uh, at, at their particular time. Um, and basically what happens, I get uh, a video good enough to be an exposed video and let it be known, at this point, I am I do not have anything personal with Grossgore slash Ali Larson, now known as the Woken Wolf. I don't have anything personal with him. I upload my exposed video. Three hours later, the video is taken down with a false copyright strike from YouTube. And I am going to admit, I am mentally ill when it comes to grudges. If you fuck with me, I'll fuck with you ten times harder. And I am literally not going to rest until... I see fit, right? It's uh, it's kind of a stupid thing to mention, but that's just how I'm wired, and that's just basically what happened. So the guy takes down my video, and I'm like, okay, the video was a little harsh. I think it deserved the criticism for 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 Gross score that I that I gave him, but I don't think it's bad enough to deserve to be silenced. So I get in contact with him, and I said, okay, you took down my video. I'll give you three options. Number one. And the easiest one, you tell me what you didn't like about the video, and if you can prove that that didn't happen, I will, I, uh, I will edit the video in a way to like take that out and then keep the rest of it because I think the criticism is valid, right? Number two, uh, I, 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 I take you to court because you know it's, it's fair use, and what you did is abuse the YouTube copyright system. So it's like okay, whatever. I, I didn't want to do that, but it was like a bluff, right? Number three, the best one, the absolute best option that I gave him. We go on a one-on-one -on -one interview in which I put down every single topic I talk about in the video. If you can deny, if you can refute, if you can debunk at least one of the things I said, I will take down the video, you are never going to hear from me ever again, and I will disappear from your life, right? So he agrees to the interview, but it was like three or four months in which I said, in which he said, oh yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it, but that never happened because this person doesn't have any balls. Um, so basically, it came to a point where he was like, oh, you're just harassing me about the interview, fuck you, and then like blocked me or whatever, right? So at this point, my, my, my grudge senses like go up to 11, and I'm like, this dude just like fucking made his own gravestone if you call it like he 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 just basically dug his own grave. Um what do I mean by I was certain that I could do some some maybe not damage but I could like actually expose him is that the things that are documented for uh for him are like um what do you call it are like legit and if you want to call to cancel someone for saying the n-word five years ago, if you want to cancel someone for being homophobic three years ago, people can grow out of that. But you can't really grow out of being a child groomer and a woman harasser, right? So I compile more evidence than something that I call a pasteman, right? Um, and then every time I see positive uh, like support for him, I'm like, oh, this is who you are supporting, and then boom, it's the pacement. I had a lot of people go like, oh, I didn't know any of this, I'll, I'll stop talking to him, and I'm like, nice. Um, so eventually it came to a point where he started streaming League of Legends on Twitch, right? And his numbers go absolutely insane, he goes from like 4,000 viewers in January to like 10,000 viewers at the beginning of March, and then I was like, bro, this is this is really not going to work, I, I am not going to be able to deplatform this dude. So what happens is that he killed his own career because uh, he goes, like, when he's streaming, he goes to Reddit. And if you guys don't know, there's a subreddit called uh, Roast Me in which people post a picture of themselves and then ask the users to roast them. Mostly, I would say, their, their, their physical appearance, right? So Ali Larson uploads a post to Roast Me and he just leaves it there for a little bit. And then someone... Uh, this, this was actually not me, right? This was not me. I, I Hand and heart, I didn't do this. The only thing I did was make the pastebin, compile it, and then kind of like hope that someone opens it and it's like, oh, exposed, right? Someone on Reddit posts a comment saying, you sexually harass and assault women, linking to some articles of him actually doing this. This is not an allegation. There are videos of this dude sexually harassing women multiple women in a Jackix event, and then that person links that, and then the, the, the person edits the comments to include my pastebin, and I'm like, fuck yeah, dude, okay. So, 
the basement went from like 3,000 views in like the span of months to like, I would say upwards of like 200,000 views in like two days. And I was like, holy fuck, dude. Um, so basically what happens is that Mr. Grosgore uploads a video kind of not apologizing, but like just saying, oh, this happened a long time ago. Oh, I forget about this. Oh, if this happened, I'm sorry. Like, like I said before, this person is like, doesn't have any balls. Um, and then basically what happens is that that went up on March 12th, right? Uh, and then it was like end game for that, right? If my pacement in that comment, like people are exploding, people are talking about it, people are making videos, more victims are coming out on Twitter. Like, it's just like insane. This guy is literally, quite literally shitting his pants. Like, oh, I'm gonna get canceled, whatever, right? So what happens is that um, on March 18th, it was like 3 p.m., I was playing RuneScape, and then someone links a... Uh, a tweet by Mr. Larson saying, I just got banned on Twitch from drama from 20, from 2015, right? So basically what happens is that this guy, what he did is that he had, uh, well, he, he's been in a relationship with, with many people, but what he did is that he sent revenge porn of a minor, of a 17 year old to her mother, right? And then he also distributed, well, uh, according to, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> uh, I have to say allegedly here in, in, in the video, right? Uh, there was another woman who came out on Twitter who said that allegedly, well, who, allegedly, whatever, who said that Mr. Larson uh, distributed her underwear pictures on Twitch, like publicly. So this guy has multiple counts of sharing explicit images of minors, sexually harassing women, abusing drunk women at parties, uh, scamming, uh, being disgusting towards his sister, his daughter. Like this guy is one of the big absolute, and, and I'm only touching the surface, right? This guy is one of the biggest pieces of shit you'll ever see. And um, yeah, he posts a tweet in which, oh, I got banned. And I'm like, nah, that has to be fake. So we go to like a page that tracks people's, um, I would say, bans or whatever, and yeah, what happened, he got banned, deplatformed, and yeah, I, I I mean, I'm not gonna say I got what I wanted, because I don't want to make it sound like it was all because of me, but I, I'm willing to bet that if that pastebin didn't, like, make its way in uh, on Reddit, I think this absolute degenerate would still be uh, you know, streaming on Twitch, which uh, I know this topic alone took like, I would say maybe 20 minutes of the video, but uh, trust me, this is like the short version of it. And yeah, so basically this person doesn't have any work ethic, right? Uh, if you if you tell him, oh, you have to work a real job, he's like, no, 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 I'm not gonna break my back doing that. Because for most of his life, his income has basically been uh, donations from low lives who still support someone like this and go like, oh, I'm still, I'm going to wait for donations. And right now you have a guy who like, you know, is like paying shit for him and whatever, which uh, is kind of degenerate. Uh, I'm not going to get into the dude, but it's also like a really weird and creepy guy. Um, but uh, yeah, you still have degenerates who do it. But, you know, if he's still doing it, he's still going to do it in 2020. He's going to be an e-beggar uh, for the rest of his life. You know, People are going to do that, that's fine, but how long is that going to go, Ali? How how long are you going to do this for? Are you going to beg for money online until you're 40 years old? I, I would like to see that, right? Um, but yeah, that's how I was part of, I'm not going to say a nice operation, but a, a justified, you know, it was divine justice for this person and all because he took down my video, my exposed video that I worked so hard on, that's gone. It is, it is done, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, right now, don't really care too much about him. You know, he's basically the most one of the most irrelevant people online that, you know, st still is crawling, crawling for that relevancy that he will never, ever get again, and that's, like, so fucking satisfying. Uh, yeah, so that's how I was part of a group who justified... Ju how do you say this? Who justifiably, I, I would say that's the word justifiably deplatformed to someone who deserved it because I am not making anything up. If you look it up yourself, you will find all the information and I am not doing this out of spite. This was just like 100% uh, deserved. Yeah, so uh, that's pretty much it, fellas. So what else is there to talk about? I'm pretty sure that's uh, it. This video came out to be even longer than the previous one, which uh, you know, it's fairly decent. Uh, but yeah, 
that's pretty much it. If you made it to the uh, end of the video, especially you, Ali, make sure to let me know in the comment below what you've been up to. And that's pretty much it. If you guys still want to follow me, you can go ahead and check out my old school RuneScape channel, the Trashy Trio, and the, finally, the um, my Twitter. My Twitter, which uh, hopefully it's not going to be banned anytime soon, right? Thank you guys for watching. Have an amazing 2022. And I'll see you for Mario Kart 9. And if not, I'll see you in... 2024 for another update. So you guys take care. I'll see you then.